This is iOS 17. I've been using it for about a month. It's probably the single biggest update that iPhones have ever had. You can do multiple timers at once. You can automatically clear out any used verification codes from your emails. You can reply to messages by swiping right. You can show it a photo of a meal and it'll tell you how to make it. It even has an AI that can learn to speak in your voice, which we'll test later. And these are just the little things. So here are the 10 major changes that you need to know. Bearing in mind that this is the beta. Starting with the basics, iOS 17 has an upgraded language model. Or in other words, your phone will better understand what you're trying to say. And this works in two ways. Autocorrect is noticeably more accurate. Like, you can actually test this side by side with an iOS 16 phone and see how it just gets those really subtle human nuances. And dictation. I have not tested a phone that can do dictation better than this iOS 17 phone can. When you talk, you can see it right there, like one word behind what you're saying, just waiting to hear your intonation so it knows whether to add a comma or a question mark and even sorts the apostrophes. Plus, swear words. It no longer just assumes that you meant to say ducking. <laughs> Number nine is the FaceTime upgrade. So when you now react to things, you'll get these augmented reality effects that I guess are just there to amplify that expression. It's not useful, and I can totally imagine you wanting to turn the feature off, but I do like that you have to be quite purposeful if you want to trigger them. They won't happen automatically. That the effects will work even though the other person might not have iOS 17. And that they're actually using this true depth camera system on the front of your phone to figure out where you are in the frame and place the effects not just on top of you like a sticker, but around you. Plus, now that they've got this augmented reality stuff going on in FaceTime, it also means that you can do portrait mode effects. Just like you can in your camera app, except I don't use it there and I do use it here. Being able to increase the amount of light on your face and not just blur out the background behind you, but darken it is like the best way to take a video call. And then because the iPhone's doing all this processing on the hardware level, not the software level, it works across other apps too, like Zoom and WebEx. Plus you can now leave a FaceTime message if the person doesn't pick up. It really feels like Apple wants FaceTime to be the way that you call people. Okay, personalized contact posters is probably the headline feature of iOS 17. Apple spent quite a bit of time at their event talking about it and it didn't really register to me as something that would be any kind of game changer, but it's only using it that I'm realizing how smart it is. So you pick a name and then either a me emoji, a me Milo G, a photo or a letter, and then you can fiddle with those elements till you get to a poster that you're happy with. Now, the main downside is that it's not unlimited customization. You could definitely do more with this concept, but I imagine the reason behind controlling it is to create some sort of consistency. So everyone's posters follow the same format, so they're recognizable, and so those same details can be used in multiple different parts of the UI. And I really rate this feature. It feels very easy to get a result that looks professional. You flip between different presets, and even if your image doesn't fill the screen, they fade it out in a way that makes it look purposeful. And probably the best thing about contact posters is that it's you picking how you come across to everyone else. Up until this point, the best way to make all your contacts look neat and consistent has been you setting the photos and details for other people. I've tried to do this one by one a few times on some of my past phones because I do, I love the idea of a fully organized clean contacts list, but it just takes a special kind of commitment to actually keep that up consistently. Whereas now each person is only responsible for one person's image and that's you. It's how you are going to look to other people. So it's applying that little bit of social pressure that I think you need for a feature like this to actually kick off. It also happens to be a very clever way to make iPhone users pressure their Android friends to also get iPhones. Ooh, that. Even Milo's clammed up. He doesn't look that good normally. Now, the contact posters also tie in really neatly with the new airdrop. So what you used to have to do was to open the media you wanted to share, click share, and then click airdrop, and potentially also who you wanted to airdrop to. Now, you just bring two iOS 17 Plus phones together and the transfer initiates. It's using NFC to check for other phones, which means that it's not like wireless charging where you have to perfectly align two things to an exact spot. And the way it animates is so sick. The first time I discovered it with Drisha, we just sat there for 10 minutes doing it again and again so we could keep seeing it in action. But also they have fixed what I would say is the main problem with AirDrop, which is that it's only so far worked when you're close. Essentially, when you bring two iPhones together, they find each other via Bluetooth and then create a direct fast 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network between them. So the phone sending the file is like a Wi-Fi hub that the phone receiving the file is connecting to. That's why it's so fast. That's why you don't need to be connected to a normal Wi-Fi for it to work. But it's also why if you step more than about 10 feet away from each other, it cancels. There's only so far that your small phone can propel that direct Wi-Fi signal. So what happens in iOS 17 is that as soon as you pull your devices far enough away that the direct phone-to-phone -phone connection fizzles out, both devices realize and they switch their connection over 
to an indirect transfer, where the device sending the file is just uploading to the internet, at the same time as the receiving file is downloading from the internet. It's slower, but slow is better than never. But then, it's not just files. You can also share your contact poster like this, along with all the other details about you that you want to. So there's now a very tangible benefit to each person filling out their own contact details and making their poster look nice and pretty. Okay, there is a Siri upgrade too. And I'm particularly glad that Siri is getting some love, because it feels like it was introduced 12 years ago as the future of how to interact with your phone, and then it just sat there, while Google Assistant has been getting better at a much faster rate. So Siri now responds to just the word Siri. You don't need to say hey anymore. Me realizing that I've just accidentally triggered every iOS 17 user's phone. <laughs> But it is quite clever, because it waits for a split second after you finish the word to make sure that you're not about to say Serial or Sirius. We've now got continued conversation, which to be fair, Google Assistant has had for a long time, but nonetheless, I would say is the single biggest improvement that Siri has had from the very beginning. Because it means you can actually have a conversation with it without needing to tap the button every single time. Like this. What's the weather today? Rain is forecast today. Okay, what about tomorrow? Looks like it will be partly cloudy tomorrow. What about this time next week? I can't check the weather that far ahead, but here's the forecast for the next 10 days. So you just told me what it is next week. Okay, well, the continued conversation part of it is cool. Plus, you can now ask it to read web pages by just saying, Siri, read this. Trimethylaminuria, T-M-A-U, is an uncommon condition that causes an unpleasant, fishy smell. Siri, call doctor. It's not quite like real speech. Like, it still has that robotic intonation that modern AI programs are actually starting to bypass. But I've been using this to read out news articles in the mornings, and it's not too far off feeling like a personalized one-person radio station. Oh, yeah, and I spent 15 minutes last night rattling off the weirdest phrases that the phone was asking me to do so that it could train to learn my voice. The gentleman with the fan exclaimed, Good morning. <laughs> what is this? And to test the results in action, Hello there, my name is Owen Meany. I'm a 27-year-old economics graduate and I love phones. What? I never said those words to this phone. Number five, though, has got to be the Safari update. So for starters, you can make profiles, like work and fun. It's a bit convoluted. You actually have to go into the settings to make those profiles before you can use this. But once you've done that, you can flick between these different modes by tapping this icon. I would say this itself is one of those hyper-specialized features that I probably won't use, because you already have tab groups, which can group all the tabs related to any one thing together. But what is cool is that they've also made the tab groups experience better too. You used to have to switch between them with this not so pretty menu, now you just swipe. So when you're in a tab and you swipe, it swipes to the next tab in the tab group you're in. And then when you zoom out to look at all your tabs in the group, you can swipe to change the group. And the other thing, which now I've seen it as a feature just feels like such a no-brainer, your private browsing windows are locked by default. So no one else can see them unless they have your face, which it changes the dynamic from making sure that you always close every single one of those private tabs after using them to now trusting that it doesn't matter, only you'll be able to see them regardless. But then a much bigger change has got to be this new standby mode. So as long as your phone is locked, on charge in some way, it can be Apple's $100 plus wireless charging stand, which is very fancy, but I'm glad that it doesn't have to be that. And that you just make sure it's in horizontal mode, it'll activate this new interface. There's a widget screen, which lets you pick from a bunch of different interactive tiles, a photos page, and then a clock page, where you can cycle through different clock styles. It actually feels a lot like an Apple Watch to use. Now, I don't think this is for everyone. It's kind of everything your phone already does, but just presented in a different way. But there are certain contexts where I do see the benefit. Like if you're working, for example, and you want to keep an eye on your phone in case something important comes up, but you don't want to be on your phone, then sticking it a bit further away from you in this standby mode, it feels like a more passive way to keep up to date. Kind of like that Nothing phone we just tested. I'll leave that video linked from this one. I'm liking this new attention from phone makers towards mindful use of the smartphone. And probably the best part of it is that if you're really into sports, being able to see live scores without actually having to find a place to watch it and the distraction element of that, I think that's great. Oh, and it has automatic night mode. You know how you get those blue light filter apps that take out a lot of the distracting blue light that wakes you up and strains your eyes? Well, on night mode here, there is no blue light. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be IO yes. IO no. <laughs>
The interactable widgets do not end with standby though. So this is an iOS 17 home screen. You can call someone directly from it. And I was quite surprised to see you can configure it. So this left hand button over here, for example, launches a FaceTime video, but then the right hand button launches a WhatsApp message. You can play and pause music. You can control your podcasts. It's all pretty simple stuff, but I'm a big believer in widgets like these because they keep you out of apps and the webs of algorithms that those apps use to make you lose track of time. But by far the thing that I'm most excited about in iOS 17 is what's happening with messages. So for starters, new interface, very shiny, but then you know how the speech detection just got better. So now when you send a voice note, it literally instantly transcribes it. And it's smart about it. Like if you send a 15 minute recap of your life, it knows that that's something that the other person needs to listen to, to get. But if you just wanted to send a voice note that says, hey, remember to buy milk, because say you're in a situation where you can't type, then it will turn that message into text. So the other person can get the contents of that message in whatever the most convenient way is for them at that time. It's a subtle thing, but I think it matters. And then the cherry on top is check-in, which is where your phone uses its location data to let the people you care about know automatically when you've reached where you told them you were going, which saves you having to do the whole text me when you get there. Okay, I've arrived, dance every single time. But to be really honest, more so than any of the features that are actually useful, I have had the most fun playing around with stickers. I have not once in my life made a custom sticker on a phone until iOS 17, because this makes it very easy and very, very cool. So let's say you're browsing your photos and you come across this masterpiece. You just hold down on the face and click create sticker. That's it. That's something that you can now drop straight away into messages. And not just in this really flat way that feels like a typical conversation thread. You can put them anywhere. And then you can turn those digital stickers into what feels like physical stickers with different effects that respond to how you tilt your phone. I gasped when I saw this, not because it's bleeding edge tech, but just because it's a really clever human feeling interaction that leverages the tech you already have. Now I will say it does feel a little at odds with the very polished controlled nature of some of the iPhones other features like contact posters, because when you start messing with stickers, these chats get very chaotic very quickly. But then I'd be lying if I said it didn't allow you to express yourself better than you used to be able to. Like if I think about the absolute whale of a time that my team has had making custom emojis for our Slack group, this is a playground on a whole other tier. And that's iOS 17. I'm kind of sad to see that there's nothing major new for the Dynamic Island, considering that is one of the newest hardware features, but the overall direction I like. And I want to keep making iOS videos like this, as well as summaries of what's happening in the world of Android. So let me know if you want to see that too.